Hi everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to continue our exploration of regression analysis and switch our perspective into the polynomial regression world. Mostly we've been focused on the linear regression model, but sometimes the regression model um, that is linear is not appropriate. And usually one of the first things that we usually do to assess that appropriateness is a scatter plot. So what I've done here is I've created this artificial data set X and Y that is going to sort of demonstrate the purpose that I want to talk about today. Um, so how do you know if a linear model is or is not appropriate? So a scatter plot usually is the best place to start. So let's create a scatter plot for our data. So that's usually done by x comma y and make sure of course these data points are defined in your R environment. I want to make this scatter plot a little bit more interesting to look at so I'm going to add a little bit of shape and a little bit of color to this. So PCH is equal to 18 and there are some other PCH numbers that are out there. Um, pretty much references a particular shape or a particular style for which these points are going to have. Um, there's several different colors that you could of course have in the R programming language, let's assume we choose purple, and CX is going to be equal to the point size for each of the points for which we have. Um, usually ranges from 0 to infinity, but too big of course covers the entire plot, which is not good. And then let's give this a scatter plot a name, so let's say scatter plot of the XY data. Right? And that's going to create a scatter plot of our data set. So as we notice here, this is definitely not a linear training data. You can of course see that from the standardized visual plot for the data if you were to do, for example, a linear model fit for this data set. But just by looking at the scatter plot, we obviously see that this is possibly some po uh, polynomial or possibly even a sinusoidal like sine or cosine type of uh, training data. Maybe even a time series data of this horizontal axis is time. Um, that usually is a, a sign for, for example, seasonality or or something like that. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to actually create uh, my linear model. I'm going to show that a linear model, of course, is not statistically appropriate. Then we're going to build, say, a quadratic model, a cubic model, and see which one fits the best and sort of how we can sort of assess that um, from the statistical perspective. So up to this point, you should be familiar with how to create regression models uh, using R. So of course, there are several pre-built functions, for example, the LM function that does this up to some certain level of accuracy, um, but we've actually already created our own via the series, uh, which I called sort of uh, the Nemo LM function. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to import that and just use that since we should all be familiar with, you know, sort of how to build our own regression models up to the stage as well. All right. So the first model that I'm going to build is going to be a degree one model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a model with Y with respect to X only, right? So that's going to be our linear model, right? So once I have that, then I'm going to actually graph this linear model onto this data set, and we're going to see that it actually doesn't really fit the data that well. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect all of the points that this model is going to generate in terms of the predicted values. I'm going to connect them with a bunch of lines and see what that sort of that model sort of looks like. So on the horizontal axis, I'm going to do x, and then I'm going to do the predicted values. So how am I going to do the predicted values? So this model one is going to return a set of structures, right? So the predicted values, the residuals, standardized residuals, leverages, and several other things that we aren't really going to use today, right? So the first thing I'm going to plot is the intercept of that line. So that's going to be, for example, beta hat, um, the first entry. So that's going to be beta hat zero. And then I'm going to do M1. And then the second parameter, which is going to be beta hat one, right? So that's in the second entry of the beta hat vector. And then I'm going to multiply that by my X values. So this is going to be all of my predicted values associated to those X values for which I have, right? And what is that going to look like? So if I plot that with some particular line width, say line width is equal to three, that's going to give me this model shown in black, right? So obviously, yeah, it sort of fits the data to some degree, but it doesn't sort of extrapolate, you know, for example, in this little over arch and that under arch as well. So it's really not that good of a data set, right? So is there an easier way to plot these values? So keep in mind, we're just plotting the predicted values, right? So all I technically need to do is just do uh, our model and then just do the predicted values, and that's of course going to give us the same exact line. Okay, so is a linear model a good fit? You could of course look at the R squared value, which we're going to sort of compare all the R squared values at the end, but from the scatter plot, we see that that is not an appropriate model. 
Now, since we have at least qualitatively confirmed that a linear model is not appropriate, what is the next model that we should consider? So if we're considering only polynomial models, the next degree up will be a degree two, which is known as a quadratic model. So how are we going to construct that? So in order to construct a quadratic model, what we're going to feed our LM function this time is y, and then we're gonna feed it two vectors, the x value and the x squared vectors, okay? So we're gonna be calling x2 x squared or x1 squared. All right, so that's gonna create our quadratic model with minimal effort. And then we're going to plot these data points to see if that's a better fit. So what are we going to do? So we're going to be able to plot x versus the predicted values for m2. And let's assume we're going to plot them with the same exact width. And let's color them in a different color so they don't, you know, sort of, you know, confuse with our linear model. So once we do that, we get that particular model and we ask ourselves, is that green model better than the black model? Well, you may see that eh, maybe the linear model is even better than the uh, green model. But keep in mind, technically, uh, the green model is closer to all of the points on average. Um, and there's some sort of theorems that suggest that that is actually the case. But even if that is true, the green model isn't significantly better than the black model that we have, right? Because it's still, you know, still farther than the upper arch and it's still far from that lower arch, especially. So if a degree two model isn't working, so what about a degree three? So if you know anything about single variable calculus, you should know that if a function has, you know, one maximum and one minimum or two extra points, then a degree two plus one or a degree three model will match the overall patterns of that graph on some particular interval of interest. In particular, the interval that contains that maximum and that minimum value. So let's actually look at the cubic model and actually see if that intuition actually satisfies us. So we're going to be feeding our model y again, and then we're going to be feeding it x, x squared, and x cubed since we want a cubic model. So that's going to construct our uh, cubic model, and of course it's yelling at us, so what do we need to do? Um, oh, we need to define uh, x cubed, not x3. Right There we go, now it's happy. So let's plot these values and see what it gets. So we're going to do lines, x, and then we're going to do the predicted value of our cubic model. Line width equals to three. And then let's choose another color. Let's do, let's say light sky, light sky blue. And there's a cubic model. Now look how wonderful, at least to me, um, that that blue curve uh, satisfies uh, all of those points, right? So our intuition is definitely satisfied for that. So at least qualitatively, um, a cubic model appears to be a lot better uh, than the linear and quadratic models. So let's actually build a little statistical way um, for us to test that. So keep in mind, the R squared value will increase um, uh, to one, regardless if those values are actually very useful, um, provided that they uh, have at least one non-zero value in them. So of course the easiest fix to this R squared issue is to create what we call the R squared adjusted values, right? So we've already calculated the R squared adjusted values in our Nemo LN function, so we can just reference them directly, okay? So we're going to be creating a vector that's called R2A, which is gonna consist of all of our R squared values for each of our linear, quadratic, and cubic models. So for example, the R squared value is saved, at least to me, in R2 adjusted, and then we're going to do M2 R2 adjusted, and then M3, then R2 adjusted. So that's going to calculate our R squared adjusted values, and if we sort of look at our environment, we have 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and something close to 1. So obviously, from the R squared adjusted values, we see that the cubic model is significantly more impactful or, or significantly more representative of our data compared to our linear and quadratic models. So let's do a nice little uh, a horizontal bar chart, let's say, that sort of uh, demonstrates that to our audience in case we're trying to sort of, you know, uh, advertise that to people. So let's make a bar plot. And our bar plot is going to consist of our R squared adjusted values that we just calculated. Let's make this horizontal just for fun. So horizontal equals true. And let's give this a nice little title. So main, so this is going to be R squared adjusted values or squared adjusted values, we usually know the values, we don't have to say that, um, for our polynomial models. Okay, um, let's label each of the plots that they're going to give us, so names.arg, and that's gonna be equal to, so the first one's gonna be our linear, our squared adjusted value, then it's gonna be our quadratic, our squared adjusted value, and then it's gonna be our cubic, our squared adjusted value. 
and let's give it some color just for um, entertainment purposes. Let's call let's color this beige. And let's set the X limit values. Um, typically a safe lower bound is always going to be zero, um, 0. And then the upper bound is usually going to be based on either the maximum of your R squared values or the um, threshold value for which you consider to be high. Let's assume that's 8.85%. Uh, Right? Let's go a little bit higher so it doesn't you know, chop the graph off at that point. Um, and the R squared value is typically maximized at about 1. So um, let's just say that that is our axis values. Right? And that is our R squared adjusted uh, values for our polynomial models. And we obviously see that our cubic um, from the graphical perspective is illustrated that perfectly. Now, usually similar to our variance inflation factor plot, we usually like to have a vertical bar that sort of signifies, you know, what we consider to be significantly large. So let's include that little line. So we're going to do AB line, and that's like a vertical line that's going to be at your cutoff value. So if you want something higher than 85%, then you can, of course, change that. Let's color this to be equal to blue. And then our line type. Um, let's do a long dash, and let's make the line width equal to 2. Right. And there's a little dashed line that signifies that, uh, you know, our cubic model is sufficiently well or fits our data significantly well, which our scatter plot, of course, um, supports. Now, keep in mind, if you do do a quartic or a quintic or a higher order polynomial, the R squared values for those are also going to be high. Um, because, you know, our SSC converges to zero. That's, you know, one of the properties or pluses or even potential downsides of polynomial regression models. So usually what we do, since the R-squared adjusted values are just going to get closer and closer to 1 because the polynomial is going to, in a sense, overfit the data, usually what we do is we choose the first polynomial model that passes over this thresholding line, and that's usually that the model that we stick with to avoid the overfitting issue. But those are some of the basics of polynomial regression and how to do it in the R programming language. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.